Well, glory to God. I don't know if all of you or some of you or a few of you have seen the, uh, the quote for the day. The quote for the day was, not every snake crawls in the dirt. Ha <laughs> ha. Not every snake crawls in the dirt. You know, we have an enemy who is relentless. You would think that somebody who had been made a show of openly in front of all the demonic as well as angelic forces, you would think that he would realize he has no way to go but down. But the fact is, because of his being relentless, you and I must remain focused not just on his defeat, but on our assignment as the men and women of God. You see, when he was defeated, divine life was provided. And in order for us to walk in that, we can't just occasionally be a part of what it takes, but we have to become relentless also. Now, honestly, as I've said it before, I believe I stand before people this morning that have achieved a degree of relentlessness. But I believe we can all step it up a little bit, not just because we should, but because we need to. We need to continue to grow. The Bible says that we grow through the Word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. We continue to be strengthened in our faith. And as we've been talking about over the last five or six weeks, what we've dealt with is not the end of what will have to be dealt with. But I believe there are a people in the lot this morning who have found out that they can and will press through any and everything that will come against them. And you know, as I prayed and as I spoke to you a moment ago, as we were praying over those claws, I want you to realize that you, you, you don't need to be satisfied with a partial anything because the Father through the Son has paid for you to have perfect wholeness and divine life in every area of your life. And as we continue in these services, Jumpstart, Coffee with PK, Nightlife, Late Night, as we continue to go over these basic principles of God's Word, I encourage you, act as if you just got to the table. Act as if you haven't had a bite to eat in 72 hours. Begin to set yourself up for supernatural revelation and a dose of confidence that only comes one way, and that's when you're hungry and you're thirsty for more of what God has done for you. And listen, this is not just for us. What he did is not just for us. It's for what he can do through us. And that is the goal as we face the days ahead, is that we reflect him like never before. This first statement on your paper there, love fuels faith and destroys fear. You know, thank God for his love in us. Thank God I don't have to go by my natural love as it pertains to things going on around me and things that I must deal with. Thank God I have got the love of God in my heart deposited there, de- deposited there by the Holy Spirit so that fear will not dominate me. Hallelujah. Love fuels faith 
Well, of course it would because God is love and destroys fear. Without a rock-solid revelation of God's love in you and for you, it's got to be in you first and foremost. An individual, when they receive him, the love of God is deposited in them. And from that point forward, they have an opportunity to allow that love to, be, to become the love that they operate from. An unconditional love like the love that he had for us. A love that doesn't consider who it's loving. A love that just loves because that's exactly what love does. So without a rock-solid revelation of God's love in you and for you, why is it for us? It's for us. So again, we can reflect Him in everything we do. It's the love of God that we are to allow flow from us in every situation we come in contact with, including weirdness, including strange things, including things that are bizarre. We are still able to release the love of God. Why is that? Because we're not considering what we see We're considering what is in us. Again, without a rock-solid revelation of God's love in you and for you, fear will paralyze your faith. Fear will paralyze your faith. You know, I, I don't believe, matter of fact, I don't believe, I know that I'm not the only one on the lot today that doesn't look at things the same way they once did. I know I'm not the only one on the lot today that is now in a position where concern is not something that I have. Concern about anything is not something that I have. Taking one step at a time is what I'm devoted to now, to do what I hear to do and to move forward without any regard of what's in front of me. Glory to God. Do you know that when you see what's in front of you, then it has an opportunity to affect you. But we look right past what's in front of us, whether they're candidates for the kingdom, whether they're people that are coming against us, we look right through them to him. And when we do that, The love of God is able to be seen in us, and our faith is not paralyzed, nor are we concerned about what man can say or about what man can do to us. In Luke 12, 32, Jesus made this statement. He said, fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, to give you the kingdom. Not to let you earn the kingdom, but to give you the kingdom. Hmm? Not so that you'll sweat and work, but no, so that you will receive the kingdom. Jesus said, it's our Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. You know, that means means we, we can't have any place for fear or apprehension or concern or worry about what we're going to receive or what we're going to have as the children of God. All fear is demonic. There's no such thing. And we've talked about this over the years and some in the past months. All fear is demonic. There's no such thing as a healthy fear. No such thing as a healthy fear. Fear is demonic. Fear is designed to take you out. Fear is designed to fill you with doubt. And when that happens, then your life is paralyzed. All fear is designed to destroy your faith. How many times did Jesus say it to his disciples? Why, why, why are you, why are you uh, uh, so faithless? Why, why, are you, why, why are you so, uh, so full of doubt? Why is it that you don't believe? Why are you 
so afraid. Fear is designed to destroy your faith. Listen, what God's Word says is part of His kingdom provision for each and every one of us. And you can't receive that if you've got just a little bit of doubt. A little bit of doubt will keep the victory out. You can't have a little bit of doubt. You've got to know in whom you have believed. You've got to understand that this faith that comes from hearing the Word of God is designed to move you forward, to move you forward in such a way that you are never concerned about yourself or what He has for you because you know, because of His love for you, He has provision for you. So all fear is designed to destroy your faith, but there's no fear when you know this. Luke 10, 19, street version. Check it out. He said, I give you power over deception and distractions, and absolutely nothing can harm you. Deception and distractions. Has there ever been a bigger one than we're dealing with right now? Has there ever been a bigger distraction? Has there ever been a greater level of deception than there is right now? Hmm? Maybe we could say in the garden. Maybe we could say in the garden when the enemy began to deceive Eve and took authority and was given authority over the earth. But we've never seen, at least I've never seen, in my 74 and a half years, of course a lot of things I didn't see when I was maybe one, two, three, or four years old, or didn't understand what I was seeing. But since I've grown, since I've, since I've matured, I've never seen the level of deception and distractions that we're in at this particular juncture. And I'm going to give you a little assignment. Most of you have your calculators right there. I want you to divide 181. Or you could just go ahead and, you could go ahead and uh, use 200. Use the figure 200. And divide it by 2 million. And that would be, I suppose, a reason for our state to be shut down for this period of time that it's been shut down. Go ahead and divide two million into 200. Now, I don't even know what that is because it's so infinitesimal. Is it one-tenth of one percent? One percent even? One, a bunch less. Holy Lord Jesus. That is the epitome of deception to think that that number, that that number was reason enough to shut our state down. And let me tell you something. You take maybe however many, 75,000. Am I discounting the deaths of those people? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But you know what? Death happens. Death happens. And honestly, a lot more death than that happens and has happened for various reasons. But you can take, I guess, about 75,000. I don't know what the figure is today. I'm not sure they do either. But that's all part of deception and distraction. Hmm? And you divide it by 350 million. And then you will see why our 
nation has been shut down. Not every snake crawls in the dirt. Deception and distraction is ultimately focused on the men and the women of God. It is designed to steal the word from us. It is designed to put us in a position where we become intimidated, where we become fearful, where we begin to question what we believe. Wow. We can't afford to do that. We can't afford to question what we believe. Because if we question what we believe, we will not lay down our life as we know it for what we believe. And that's exactly what the Master has called us to do. Amen. In following Him, we make a decision that we're going to be willing to follow Him. And we have been deceived and we have been distracted. And honestly, I know it's affected every one of us in the soulish realm. But what you've got to do, what we all have to do is say, no, no, I'm going to look at what I have as it pertains to my inheritance. And I am not going to allow the distractions the deception, which is absolutely unparalleled, unparalleled, unparalleled deception and distraction that has shut our nation down for one reason and one reason only, to shut down the only thing that matters, and that's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The only hope that people have is that there will still be a people like us who are not going to shut up just because there's been pressure put on us. They can endeavor to do whatever they endeavor to do, but we are not going to be deceived. We are not going to be distracted. We have been given a purpose, and our purpose is to not only proclaim proclaim the, 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 the gospel, but to stand up for righteousness and justice that belongs to us as the men and women of God. We're the only nation that has an opportunity to stand up from a governmental perspective, but we need to be willing to do that also. There is no reason for you and I to be in fear. We have been given the Word of God We've been given a mandate by God, and he said right here that nothing shall by any means hurt us. That means your feelings or any other thing associated to your life. He said nothing. He said nothing. He said, he said behold, he said, check it out. He said, I give, you, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, distractions and deception, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing, no thing, shall by any means hurt you. Now, if I were you, I'd take a dose of that at least once a day. I would take that gospel pill at least once a day. And I would, I would just tell myself, self, do you understand that nothing shall by any means hurt you because of what he's done for you? He has empowered you to resist the temptation to falter or to fear. And he's given you an opportunity through faith to persevere. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The kingdom is yours by faith. This belongs to you. Why? Because God said so. Because God said so. This kingdom belongs to you. It belongs to you. And we see right here in the book of uh, Romans 14, 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not a restaurant being opened. The kingdom of God is not a restaurant being open. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. I, you know, I'm a fairly sharp guy, but I don't understand. And 
And it's not, uh, it's not a dealership being open, even though I still can't figure out why you can't buy a car. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Crazy that you can't buy a car, huh? But the kingdom of God is not a restaurant being open, a dress shop being open, an automobile dealership being open, hmm? a nail salon being open, a hairstyling salon being open. That, that's not what the kingdom of God is. Even though I don't know why we can't do those things. I mean, we're out here breathing. I wonder where that stuff is. Do you suppose it's just flying around everywhere? What difference does it make when no plague can come near us? What difference does it make when we actually believe that, that the blood of Jesus protects us? Hallelujah. Well, that makes us pretty goofy to them other people, doesn't it? Well, I'm going to tell you, somebody will shut down our state for one one thousandth of a whatever Please, please, please. Is there a brain in the house? Huh? Please don't tell me you've got a degree. Please don't do, tell me that you can do your gazentas. You know, like two gazenta six, three times. Don't tell me that you can do that. And then shut down the lives of people and tell us that you're doing it for their good. To protect your health. Really? Yeah. Really? Really? Now you're doing some more crawling. Yeah. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not what you wear, what you drive, where you live. Right. But it's righteousness, yeah. peace, and joy yeah. in the Holy Ghost. You know what? You know what? You know what? You can be aggravated. You can be angry. But you know what? You can still be full of peace. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I guess I've got great peace knowing that those that are against us are not as smart as us. They just don't know what we know. Because if you know what we know, you know that no weapon formed against you will prosper. And what's really, really, really evident is that there is a blindness going on that's of a greater level than it's ever, ever showed its ugly head before. And that's why you need to not miss next Sunday, because next Sunday we're going to talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about what we face and how we'll deal with it. So again, righteousness defined is integrity, virtue, purity of life. That's what the kingdom is. Hallelujah. It's living and walking in integrity in virtue or honesty, purity of life, glory to God. Man, I'll tell you what, I, I guess maybe you have to live a filthy life before you realize how cool it is to live a pure life. So I guess I can, I can attest to the differences in that. Hallelujah. It's great to live a pure life with pure motives, with pure focus, with a pure desire, with a pure purpose, glory to God. That's what righteousness does for you. It's also rightness, correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting. There's a correct way to think. There's a correct way to feel. You know how you, you, know how you feel correctly? You tell yourself how you feel. You don't ask yourself how you feel. You tell yourself how you feel. Who was it? Was it Smith Wigglesworth? Somebody asking him, came up to Smith, said, Smith, how, how, how do you feel today? He said, I don't ever ask myself how I feel. I tell myself how I feel. Hallelujah. I'll tell you how I feel. I feel like the Word of God is the way I am and not how I feel. Right. Hallelujah. Correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting. Peace is security. You know, when you're secure, it don't make no difference what happens. Huh? When you're secure, when you know in whom you have believed, it doesn't make any difference what happens. What difference does it make what somebody does when you're secure? What difference what somebody does or what somebody says if you're secure, if you know him and you're growing in him? It means safety. 
It means prosperity, and it means fulfillment. Joy means to be exceedingly joyful. Hallelujah. You ought to be happy in the middle of misery. You ought to be happy when everybody else is bawling and squalling, griping and complaining, and all of the other things that we've done in the past that we need not do in the future. Joy is not based on something good happening. Joy is a spiritual force that was given to you and I. So when all of this hits the fan, we can still rejoice knowing that it's not going to stick on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joy, again, to be exceedingly joyful, to thrive, and to be well. Is anybody out here doing well? Well, you're doing well because of what He has done for you. Glory to God. This kingdom, these kingdom ingredients give us the stability to walk by faith. When you know you've been made righteous, when you've got a peace that passes understanding, when there's a joy in you that doesn't need anything funny to happen, to become comfortable with, then you know, you know that you can live stably and you can walk by faith. 2 Corinthians 1.20, all the promises of God in Him, in Him who? In Jesus are yes, and in Him, amen. All the promises already belong to us. You can be assured that up until your last breath, everything is going to be taken care of. And the moment you take that one, hallelujah, there'll be a glory before you that will be with you forever. If it's written, it's yours. If you find it in the Word of God, it belongs to you. It's part of your kingdom benefits glory to God. When we find what the Word says, we have got to get to a point where what the system has is something that we depend on. Now, whatever they do, we can take advantage of those things if we do it correctly. But let's be sure that a broke system is not going to continue to keep you and I from being broke. What's going to keep us is our faith and confidence in what He has for us. Remember, His Word is forever settled. What they do, the legislation they write, that's, that's only as good as the next session that's going to show up. So you and I, we put our confidence. Listen. Listen, the level of deception, just divide, just divide the, the 200 by 2 million. Case closed. Case closed. They have shut you down for a percentage that makes no sense. They've shut you down. But you know what? The truth is we shut ourselves down. Because we still have all the power. We still have the ability. And from this point forward, we have the opportunity to not let those things keep us from the success that belongs to us. If it's written, it's yours, but you cannot waver or you will never experience it. We see that here in the book of James. James said, if any of you lack wisdom, James 1, 5 through 8, he said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally. In other words, he doesn't give you a little dab. He doesn't give you just a little bit here to pacify you. He doesn't swing a carrot in front of you occasionally. He said he gives to all men liberally and upbraids or holds nothing back, and it shall be given to him. These times require the mind of God. Listen, none of us, none of us have the wisdom to navigate situations like this without the mind of God, without the mind of Christ, without the Word of God. Verse 6 goes on to say, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of a sea 
driven with the wind and tossed. To waver is to hesitate or to doubt. To hesitate or to doubt. You can't do it. You got to keep the doubt out. You got to keep the doubt out. If you're still wavering, then you need to become stabilized in what's created you to begin to waver. Verse 7 says, For let not that man, what man? The man who hesitates, the man who wavers. Let Let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. You know, that makes it so clear right there that everything we receive him, we got to receive it by faith. And the only reason he did it that way was not to make it difficult on us, but so that he could do for us what he wanted to do for us. The only way that he can work around the enemy, now being the little G God of this world, is by us following the principles that need to be followed, which means it takes faith to please God. It takes faith to put ourselves in a position where we can receive everything that he has for us. No faith, no results. No faith, get results. It's the difference between an N-O and a K-N-O-W. When you know faith, you're going to get results. Amen. Verse 8 says, this is the reason that they don't. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Listen, you either believe it or you don't. And you know, you begin to know you believe it when you begin to receive what you say you believe. That is a quick check of what you and I believe. Hallelujah. Because when we truly believe it, we'll truly receive it. And we'll truly be able to walk in it. Insecurity or fear begins in the mind and then cripples your faith. Insecurity. Insecurity. And honestly, in the days we live in and in the days ahead, here's going to be the thing about insecurity. You're going to get it. You're going to get it from where you hear it. You're either going to get it from newscasts or you're going to get it from friends or people that you run with. And they're not necessarily going to make you personally insecure, but you'll begin to become personally insecure in what you believe. And you can't do that. You've got to remain secure in not only who you believe, but in what you believe. Fear's presence. Anytime there's just a lick of fear, fear's presence reflects God's absence. Just like people that aren't doing well. Say, well, you know, if we're not doing well, then we got a Jesus deficiency. Because right. he did everything that needed to be done. Right. If there's any deficiency, it's a deficiency in our understanding of the Lord Jesus and what he has done for us. I mean, the Bible says, he even said it of himself. He said, I'm the life. I'm the life. So if we've got a deficiency, a deficiency then we've got a deficiency in how we see him in us and what he's done for us. When you truly know God, love that is, fear can't take you out. I don't mind telling you, I hit a spot. I hit a spot several weeks ago. I hit a spot. I hit a spot, and it was like, it was an I don't care spot. It was. It was like an I don't care spot. It was like I don't give a rip spot. It was like it don't make any difference to me spot. It was like, what difference? What difference does it possibly make what comes from out here if I've got what's in here going for me? What difference does it make what someone does when I've already embraced what the one that matters has done? It makes no difference, glory to God. I can press forward like I'm invisible because the truth is I'm invisible, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I can't lose. I can't lose. I can't lose. But you'll continue to lose if you see yourself in a position where you might lose. No, we're not going to lose. We've already won. This is the victory. This is the victory. 
This is the victory that overcomes the world, and that's our faith, our faith in what Jesus did. And he said it in John 16. He said, I'm telling you about all these things that are going to happen. We've talked about them here. We've talked about them in church for years. He said, I've told you about all these things that are going to happen. Because in this world, there's going to be pressure. There are going to be things come against you. There will be walking snakes come up to you. There will be deception and distractions thrown at you. But he said, you know what? Put a smile on your face. He said, for crying out loud, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome any and everything that's ever been faced or ever will be faced. Be of good cheer. Be joyful. Be ecstatic that what they do cannot harm you. Hallelujah. Quit seeing yourself as temporal and See yourself as eternal. See yourself as in the world, yes, but of the world, no. And the very next step you take is going to put you right in his presence. Glory to God. How in the world could we ever fear when we know we are only one breath away from being with him forever? Glory to God. Hallelujah. How in the world could we ever get down when we have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. We've been given every tool to overcome the world, the flesh, and the enemy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 1 John 4, 18. There's no fear in love. Say, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of weapons. I'm not afraid of words. I'm not afraid of anything. I do not have a spirit of fear, but I've been given a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. I'm of a stable mind. Even though I'm in the minority today, I have a stable mind. I don't do crazy math. I have a stable mind. I understand what matters. And it's not what I see, but what God's Word says. He said, there is no fear in love. Hmm? There's no fear in love, but perfect love or mature love casts out fear because fear has torment. Let me tell you something. I don't know. You've probably already run into some people. I know some of you have. I've heard some testimonies. You're going to run into some people that are tormented. Huh? People that don't have a calculator, I guess, but they're tormented. No, it's not that they don't have a calculator. It's that they don't have a Savior. Hmm? You're going to run into some people like that, and you're going to get set up. But the truth is they're the one that's going to get set up. It's going to give you an opportunity to just very casually begin to talk to them about there being a way to avoid the torment and the fear that goes along with lying and deception. And you've got the answer, glory to God. Hallelujah. You're going to be able to give them the answer. For many of them, for many of them that are not born again, you're going to be able to pray a simple prayer with them. And they're going to step out of darkness and into light. They're going to have an opportunity to make the last little bit of time that we have more precious to them than they've ever had because they're going to be able to have it in peace, glory to God. He said, he that fears is not made perfect in love. I don't know if I looked at this. Did I fill this in the statement before that? When you truly know God, love that is, fear can't take you out. When you're confident in him, so what you going to do? You got a weapon at my temple, and and what's that going to do? What is that going to do? That's going to put me in his presence. What can you do to me? What can you do to me? Huh? I'm a dead man. I was crucified with Christ. I'm a, I'm a dead man. What are you going to do to me? Oh, my God. There's nothing to fear. Right. Hallelujah. I'm trying to help us. Yes. I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help us. The last thing 
a child of God should ever fear is death. The last thing a child of God should ever be concerned about is death. Hallelujah. The fact is, we're already dead. We have already died. Our life is hidden in Him. Hallelujah. Honk, honk, honk. <laughs> Loving God with all your heart causes His love in you to elevate your faith. Hallelujah. My faith is elevating. My faith is elevating. Please don't leave me if you think I'm getting crazy. I'm not getting crazy. I'm not getting crazy. I'm becoming more passionate. I'm becoming more passionate about the one I serve and about the one who loved me and gave his life for me. No, I don't have to give my life, but if my life gets taken, big deal. What does that mean? He has given his life so that we could have his life, not just temporarily, but permanently glory to God. Come on now. I'm not trying to lead you down. We got no Kool-Aid going on up here. I'm telling you that this is a heart issue. When our hearts are right, we are living for him. And if we're not living for him, we might as well be dead. And if we're dead, we're going to be with him also. Glory to God. So why don't we live for him here by not allowing any fear to keep us from being successful? A couple of more verses. Galatians 5, 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision. But what does make a difference in him? Faith, which works by love. Faith which works by love. We do know now that what we have going for us is because of Him. The life we now live in the flesh. If I'm not living this life by the faith of the Son of God, what am I doing? If I am not trusting the Son of God, who the Word says is the one that I live by now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I don't live by craziness. I don't live by willpower. I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God. You know what? He's the only one that will ever love me enough to give his life for me. He's the only one. Hey, I got a revelation of that. Hey, I got a revelation of that. He loved me enough to give his life, not just physically, not just naturally, but spiritually. He did something nobody could do. He gave his life spiritually for me so that I could be alive and part of the family. The kingdom we've been given contains all we need to finish, to finish. Say, I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish my course with joy. I'm going to finish my race with joy. Paul said this, and we all need to take this verse. You need to scratch this verse down. You need to read this verse until you get a revelation of this verse. But none of these things, Paul had talked about all of the things that had been done to him, all the persecution. Hey, you know, we haven't had anything happen to us. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, most of us don't ever need to go to a restaurant again. But none of these things, he said, move me. You know, you have to say that even when you feel like you're being moved. When between your ears you're being moved, I mean, you're thinking about, what could I do to retaliate? No, Paul said, none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. Now, come on now. This is way on out there. I hope we're not getting way on out there too quick for some of us. But just, you know, just look straight ahead. Put a smile on your face. You're behind the windshield today. You don't count your life dear unto you. So that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. You know what? 
if you get wild and passionate and super serious about the things of God, man, that's just a testimony of the grace of God. That's just a testimony of the grace of God. When you're willing to talk freely and openly about the freedom that you have, oh, glory, to talk freely and openly and to be able to take any kind of verbal abuse or Twitter hate or any of that nonsense just to let people know that on the inside of you is a joy, is a peace, is a rightness and a confidence that you can't even explain. See, the fact is you can't explain. Say, say why are you like the way you are? I say, because I got the Word of God in me. I got the Jesus of Nazareth in me. Greater, greater is he that's in me than he that used to drive me, the one from the world. Hallelujah. Our confession, our confession needs to be no fear here. No fear here. We are afraid of no one and no thing. No, we are not disrespectful. No, we are not hateful. But I can tell you what, I can tell you what, we are not going to bow to the world. We are not going to bow to the world. The stories are replete through the Word of God of the men and women, young men and women who would not take a knee. And the thing about not taking a knee is those that don't take a knee will always be free. Hallelujah. Glory to God.